four or five guys in a garage keeping lures. And look at us now. So, Mr. Winter, the floor is yours. Are you going to speak up? Yeah, it's a small room. <laughs> <laughs> you have read a lot of tape in now, is there? No. no. Read the tape. <laughs> Ronnie, he's got a microphone for you. <laughs> <laughs> Test, 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 one, two, three. What? Test, test, test. What? Huh? If you said one, two, three, I couldn't hear you. Yeah. You can go ahead. Okay, folks. Thanks for coming out tonight. Well, let's talk to you today, tonight about the uh, fish hawk exporter and exporter D probe system. First, I want to know, with a show of hands, how many people here have some kind of probe system right now in their boat? Any model? Excellent. Now, how many people have a fish hawk, either export or export D? It can be any combination. <laughs> Great. Um, so, I'd like to take a step back and uh, for new folks here, just explain the three major components of the fish hawk system. We're going to start with the transducer. Goes on the back of your boat. It's a regular Airmark transducer. It has a paddle wheel and a temperature sensor in it and it transmits the data back to your display. And this transducer operates at a frequency of 70 kilohertz, meaning it won't crosstalk or interfere with your sonar, which is a nice thing. So you can have it mounted right next to your transducer. Uh, the wonderful thing about Fishhawk is it's a wireless system. The competitors out there have a coded cable that replaces your downrigger cable, but this will transmit wirelessly from your probe up to the transducer. And then right back to your display, it's hardwired. So that's the transducer. The next piece is the probe. It's one third smaller than the previous Fishhawk probe, the older one, and the competitors. What that translates to is less blowback. You don't have much cable angle because there's less probe going through the water. The other thing they did was they went from a 9 volt battery to AA batteries. So it takes four AA batteries and uh, it'll last 100 hours or a one season. And how they achieve longevity, this thing only works if you stick it in the water. Uh, there's a little red LED that flashes, it tells you it's on. And uh, when you take it out of the water, it turns off. So. This probe has a, it, it, you know, it sends a wireless signal. It also has a pressure sensor in it to determine depth, and you, and you get that with the X4 D, where the X4, there's no depth, so this pressure sensor is very similar to the pressure sensor in the TD. In the back, there's little holes back here. That's how that works. So they've incorporated that into the probe to give you depth on the X4 D. How much for just the new probe run? The new probe, they run about $300 retail. I think you can get them for $275, $270. Okay. And it also comes with a, a breakaway cable. You run that into the rocks. <coughs> so that's the probe. And the last piece is the display. We have the X4 right here. They've had this out for some time. They're still making it and the X4D. And you see I just put these two together and now you can get the readout. It's transmitting through the air. So it's got the probe on it. So 
The nice thing about these displays, they take a very small footprint, the bases. And they're nice and tall and vertical and take a really small, and they're easy to take off. So, you know, they thought about that, you know, because that space, as you know, is a premium. The letters, or the numbers, are really easy to read from anywhere in the boat. From the back of the boat, you can see them. So for the X4, you've got the uh, surface uh, temperature and surface speed, and then the lower numbers will be your pro surface temperature and surface speed. And over here on the XD, that's 4D, this one is, uh, they've had it out a few years, but this year they remodeled it. So there's something come out, it came out uh, with some upgrades for 2015. It's recently came out with. And what they did is they put smaller digits for the surface temperature and uh, speed. And the, the top number is your depth. And big digits for the probe temperature and speed. They also did an orange backlit display. So the blue is kind of hard to see here in the bright light. But there is, you can actually adjust this to three different levels of brightness. They've added that. And in addition, uh, the big thing here is the Bluetooth chip. And I gotta get my phone out here. You can get this free app that'll let you display all this information on your smartphone or your tablet. And what you can do, you can put a second display in the back of your boat on a mount, like a tablet or a smartphone, and have a second display for the guys working the riggers. Yes. Yep. And uh, what's really cool about this thing is you can save a data point, you catch a salmon, you catch a four pound salmon on this, you can enter in a log, salmon, 22 inches, four pounds, save it. You'll have latitude and longitude in a stamp in the log. You'll have the temperature, the speed, and the depth of when you caught that fish at that given point. So if you want to, if you want to uh, torment your buddies back in the office, you can text them where you caught that fish. Or if there's other guys fishing out there, you can send them the data, either in a text or an email. <laughs> well, that's interesting you, you ask that question, because this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The amount of information, you know, the fact that this unit has a Bluetooth, Bluetooth chip in it, uh, the sky's the limit, the amount of stuff you can, you can do now. So that's the third component. So saving that data point is only in the app on the Right. Yes, that's true, David. Yeah. And uh, like I said, you can you can put a you can get an out for the back of the boat, you can have a second display. Now I'd like to talk about three big advantages to having an X4 probe system. Uh, the, the first one is I only get three hours of fishing time, three, three and a half hours of fishing time when I go out. And it's probably been a week or ten days since I, you know, the winds are blowing. Where do you start? You know, uh, because of my schedule, I can't get on the water till 9 a.m. Sun's up, flat. Well, you know what happens at 9 a.m. After you know your buddies tell you all the fish in this at five or six o'clock in the morning, and, it, and it's no secret the bait are up high at sunrise, out of temperature. The fish are up chasing them, and then 7 7:30 comes along and the bite shuts off. The fish now are back in their comfort zone in the thermocline, 55 degrees, we'll use July as an example, and uh, you're starting over again. You literally are starting over again. If you had a fish hawk system in the boat, you now can go out, find thermocline, and what we do, you know, again, we'll use July as an example, we'll go searching for 55 degrees of water, and if it's too deep, I'm finding it 70 or 80 feet down, I don't even put a rod on it. I'll say, no, let's move. We'll go two miles, three miles, till we find, and we try to base that on the prevailing winds from the day before, the few days before, where we think the upwind, where that colder water's gonna be. So now we found the cold water. We found it at 60 feet, instead of 70 or 80. You know, we don't want to go that deep. So we moved, we found it at 60 feet. Now we'll start setting rods. And this is our program. We'll put one rod at 50 degrees. 
50 degrees, we know larger fish like the colder water, and, it, and that's usually the bottom of the thermocline. And for the larger landlocked salmon, that's, that's our starting point. We'll put another rod at 55 degrees, another rod at 62 degrees. Now that's an interesting temperature. That is the top of our thermocline. And once we've defined that, because we're targeting browns and rainbows and occasional walleye, they like it a little warmer. So it's a two, two prong attack. So the fourth rod, we'll put it out of temperature. Because everybody says, oh, you're not fishing out of temperature. That's where the fish are, that's where the bait are. Yes. So we run another rod there. And either above or below, where we're seeing bait, where we're seeing game fish chasing bait. So that's our four rod strategy. And we'll put up a slide diver on either side to, you know, to mix it up. About 150, 180 feet of line out. So that's our program. And this fish hawk helps us achieve, you know, maximizing the three hours of fishing that I have out on the water. And I feel really confident about that. So I'm not wasting a lot of time, you know, just trolling around in unproductive water. So that's the first one. The second one is speed. Uh, Niagara Bar, we go out there in the spring. The Niagara River in the western end of Lock Lake, Ontario. <coughs> wicked currents. Similar to Split Rock, you know, in Thompson. But in general, Lake Champlain has a lot of current. And, you know, I'm just picking on those that have the most current. Uh, having the probe where you're fishing, you know, down 50, 60 feet or 20 feet, and, you know, you're, where you point that boat 